You know, in the lectionary, the church puts together various readings, and sometimes those readings just fit together so well. But I hope you can appreciate the question of how that first reading from Job fits in with the second two readings, which are more upbeat. Job, though, is a classic in the scriptures. It is the story of human suffering and of moral choice. Every one of us can identify with this man's misery. Tennyson called the book of Job the greatest poem of ancient and modern times. The issue in Job is timeless. Why do the righteous suffer? Simply put, why do bad things happen to good people? Now, the philosophers among you will recognize in this Leibniz's question of theodicy. So we Christians are not alone in trying to figure this out. One only needs to hear our first reading to sense the anguish and struggle of a person who has been beset by misfortune. Much has been written on this question questioning why a God who is just could allow such injustice. But I think that is looking at things from the wrong end, namely from the perspective of the apparent evil. I think the more remarkable thing is how in such human suffering something is forged that surpasses the evil. How in such desperation, the human spirit meets and surpasses such suffering. Now let me be clear, I'm not talking about masochistic or sadistic suffering, suffering for the sake of suffering, but rather I am speaking about redemptive suffering, suffering that transforms us, even perfects us, are sensing something more in the senseless realities of life. A woman enduring the travail of childbirth, a soldier facing the horrors of war, or a person enduring hunger, poverty, and destitution. What makes life meaningful, even in the midst of suffering. Recently, <clears throat> we have seen this senseless and brutal suffering in the Middle East, a vile executions that leave us wondering how much more can humankind endure. We cannot fathom how a just God could allow this, but this is to focus on the evil rather than a far greater mystery. How God is already there, suffering with the innocent. Job saw his fortune burned, his family killed, his good name destroyed, yet he remained faithful. Why? Why? I think it is because there was something more going on in Job apart from all his possessions and all his fortune. That something more was a deep and abiding relationship with God. A sense that no matter what malady beset him, he was immersed in the mystery of God. Yes, like all of us, Job first saw the bleakness of his situation. But in a masterful turn, he comes to realize God's wisdom. Fear of the Lord is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So why was there that core of good within this man of misery? 
I think it is because Job encountered the divine, the wisdom of God in this world, this disclosure, this revelation can be understood as bearing witness to the good. This testimony, this proclamation goes by another name, and that is preaching. Not just pulpit preaching, but all the creative ways in which we broadcast God's goodness. The ways we name God in our midst. You may think peculiar that a Dominican is casting preaching as a very common, ordinary, everyday thing, but it is. The best preaching takes place over a coffee or a beer, over a long walk with a friend on a sunny spring day, on a long drive from town to town, or in a dorm room between wake and sleep, with a roommate talking about life. If you don't believe me, reread the Emmaus story. Both our readings from Paul and the Gospel of Mark make it clear that preaching the good news is an essential part of the Christian call. You see, there is a difference between knowing about someone and deeply truly knowing that person. Preaching is meant to bring us closer to God. It's not about the things we know. It's about who we know in our knowing. St. Paul in the second reading is ready to burst in his freely and joyously sharing the good news. Forged out of brokenness, and blindness on a dirty road to Damascus, the persecutor met the persecuted. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Paul encountered he who is beyond the law, who fulfills the law. Such a meaningful embrace must be shared must be broadcast no matter the sufferings we endure, the ridicule of, the, of Corinth or the scorn of disbelievers. Our personal preaching happens because we know him and want to share him with others. Mark's gospel holds a gem of this kind of everyday preaching in it we see Jesus, the preacher, who heals. Now, one would think that a preacher would want others to broadcast their good news. After all, online homilies would be out of business if this weren't the case. But Jesus does an unusual thing that I want us to call attention to. He silences the demons he has driven out. That action seems so bizarre and strange. And the reason he gives is because they knew him. Now, this got me curious, so I went to the Greek text, and the translation that says, because they knew him, is only partial. The real, better translation is, because they had known him. They forfeited a relationship. They forgot and were silenced. Truly knowing Christ is ongoing. It's a living relationship. And only those who are in this relationship may speak about him. Our everyday preaching happens because we are in relationship with Christ. There is nothing more pathetic than a preacher who doesn't know Christ, who hides from the one he ought to love and tortures his congregation Sunday after Sunday. There is another item in this gospel that stands out, and that is this. 
Jesus' mission. Jesus says, Let us go to the nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose I have come. Jesus' preaching draws us not only to himself, but to the Father who sent him. Our everyday preaching is about our growing in a living relationship with Christ. Job knew that the one thing worthwhile beyond all his suffering was that relationship with God. It is the very reason why Christ came to proclaim a relationship like none you can imagine. So what makes life meaningful? What stands up against the misery and suffering this world holds? What enables us to face the loss and heartache that confronts us, if not this? A God who loves us. Life doesn't get any more meaningful than that. <laughs>